If you've never heard of the company Intermax, they specialize in power supplies, cases, and cooling options for custom computer building needs. Well, Intermax has introduced a new line of budget-friendly power supplies called Cyberbron. This is a 500 watt version. And Intermax sent this to me to test out, so I'm gonna check it out and install it in a computer that's coming up on Thrifty AV. Now, I don't talk about prices a lot on Thrifty AV because prices can change, but as I make this video, the Cyberbron 500 watt power supply is one of the most affordable power supply options on the market. I'm gonna check this out. Let's take a look at it. Outside of the box, Intermax, 80 plus bronze wattage, and this is the product line. And this is important and I almost missed it. It comes with a five year warranty. That is a long time, folks. Okay, this box is used for several products. On the 500 watt, you get one main board, one CPU, four plus four, uh, two PCIe, six plus twos, six SATAs, four Molex, and one FTD used for floppies and other devices. On the back, they show a power supply efficiency curve and you get your best efficiency at about half power and that's pretty much standard for power supplies. They make it a point that the electrolytic capacitors in here are Japanese, not Chinese. Uh, flexible flat cable design and protections include OVP, UVP, OPP, and SCP to keep you from blowing up your computer. Here's the specs on the input and output voltage and amperage. We'll check the voltages in a little bit. Okay, the box is taped shut. Well, this user manual that was sitting on the top is more extensive than you normally see. Got your uh, power cable. I'll see how long that is in a minute. It was nice of them to put the power supply in bubble. Okay, and here it is. There's where you plug it in, there's the toggle. This is not a modular power supply. All the cabling comes out of this hole right here. The good thing is you're not gonna lose any of this cabling, but it is a little trickier with cable management with a power supply like this one. And do not eat this little bag of silica gel. It says so on the bag. And this bag has four K screws for mounting onto your computer case. I'm not gonna measure all these cables, but this cable run looks about standard length for a power supply. Let's see how long the power cable is. With a power supply cable just under five feet, it should be fairly easy to get this thing to an outlet. Before I get too deep into this, one of the things I anticipate some of you wanna know is 500 watts enough. Well, it depends, and I know that's not the answer you wanted, but it depends on what is in your build, what CPU, what GPU, what motherboard, what other accessories are you putting into it? Well, there's a handy tool for that. Let's take a look. Whether you buy your parts at Newegg or elsewhere, you can use Newegg's power supply calculator to calculate your power supply needs. So I'm gonna to put together a hypothetical build. I'm gonna start with an AMD Ryzen 7, 3700X. I want to use an ATX motherboard and I'm going to go with a Radeon RX 6700 XT uh, graphics card. I want plenty of memory because I uh, do video editing as well so I'm going to do 32 gigabyte of DDR4 and I like having a nice large SSD. And I also like having a hard drive as well, a 7200 RPM hard drive. Now, a lot of people don't use optical drives, but I like to have a Blu-ray drive. And I came in at 438 watts. So a 500 watt power supply would be adequate for this build, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for growth. If I wanted to upgrade my graphics card, let's say to an RX 6800 XT, well that puts me over. 
I now need 558 watts, so the 500 watt Intermax is not going to be enough anymore. Intermax does offer 600 and 700 watt versions of the Cyberbron power supply. The machine I'm installing this on is way more modest. It's a Ryzen 3 2200G Micro ATX. I am using the built-in graphics, so I don't even have a GPU installed. Uh, 16 gigabyte of RAM, one terabyte SSD, no hard drive, no optical drive. So 142 watts is really all I need on this test bench machine. Using this power supply test drive, the 20 plus 4 plugged into the right. I'm going to do the 4 plus 4 into the left. I'm going to power on this power supply. Okay, uh, this minus 12 volts is at 12 volts. This plus 12 volts V2 is the GPU power, and that's correct. Uh, 5 volts SB is 5.1, and that's within spec. This only took 200 milliseconds to reach full voltage, which is faster than a lot of power supplies. And this plus 5 is 5.1. This plus 12 is 12.1. And this plus 3.3 volts is 3.4. All these are within spec. Plugging in this SATA connector, I got green LEDs on plus 12, plus 3.3, and plus 5. That is to be expected. It is causing a little fluctuation here, but these are still very much within spec. It's just, it's right on the border between 12 volts and 12.1 volts. Plugging the Molex into the bottom, I'm getting plus 12 volt and plus 5 volts. That's standard for Molex. There is no plus 3.3 volt rail on a Molex connection. Plugging in the floppy connector, or if you prefer FDD, I got the plus 12 and the plus 5. Again, that's normal for this connector. Unplugging the supplemental CPU and plugging in the GPU power, I'm still getting 12.1 volts. I want to stress that this is not a load test. This simply tests voltages. I've checked every pigtail. I have power out of every pigtail and all the power readings are correct. And now for the part of the video that some of you skipped ahead to. This is a micro ATX case, so the power supply is going to fit into the top of it. If you have a mid-tower case, most modern mid-tower cases mount the power supply on the bottom. Of course, on this one, there is no room at the bottom. So let's get this power supply into this case. When mounting a power supply into a case, it needs to be fan side down. This is an intake fan that exhausts out the back on a micro ATX. It's going to go right here with all the pigtails sticking out to the right. And it is a fairly tight squeeze in here. It should be put into the case before the motherboard. But it does pop in like so. When the power supply is positioned correctly, the holes on the power supply are gonna line up with the holes on the case. I like to get these screws started first before I cinch them down. If you're using this with an older computer, the four pins on the end can be taken off, but modern computers use all 24 pins. Clip generally goes on the outside and the connection is right here on the other side of the RAM. The supplemental CPU power is labeled CPU. The video might look a little grainy, I had to boost the gain, but here is the CPU and the supplemental power is right there. I have a card reader on this case that requires power, but to get to that power, I'm going to have to loosen this thing up. And that is an SATA style power connector, so I'm going to thread one of those through this hole. SATA power is keyed, so you can't hook it up wrong. Ooh, but those pins bent a little when I put it on there. Before I do my cable management and close up this case, I want to test this and see if it works. Everything's hooked up, Windows is updated, and I'm running a benchmark here, calculating pi to 8 million digits. I just want the CPU to have to do a little bit of work uh, so that it warms up and uses a little bit of power out of that power supply. Now, of course, this setup is not going to use the full 500 watts of this 500 watt power supply, but I still want to run it for a little while see if there's any issues with the fan, see if there's any, any hiccups with the power. 
And as you can see, the benchmark passed. If you've come to Thrifty AV for a tutorial on beautiful cable management, well, you came to the wrong place. I have two goals here. Keep the airflow unobstructed and make it easy to see what cable goes where. I'm going to start by tying these power cables that I just used to a hole on this three and a half inch drive bay and I'll snip off the excess on the wire tie. All right, one way to make sure that these cables do not get in the way of this fan is to snuggle them up above the fan. And again, wire ties can be helpful for this. Make sure it's easy to snip these wire ties off when you do future work on your computer. All this cabling that's not in use right now, I want to go ahead and wire tie it as well. And I'm going to fold it over once and wire tie it right here. Now I have an empty drive bay I can tuck these in, but if you're using a three and a half inch drive, an optical drive or something right here, you're going to have to find some other solution. I don't like this cable sticking out so much, so I'm going to tuck it into that same drive bay with the unused cables. And here's another cable that is way longer than I needed. So I'm going to tuck it into that same drive bay. Here's a USB header that I did not get earlier. I'll just uh, add one more cable tie here. I should have gotten it with the power cables. Again, this will be easy to cut off later if I want to. Okay, and now the CPU fan's unobstructed, the power supply fan's unobstructed, and the case fans are unobstructed. Now, Intermax does have a line of power supplies that are modular, so you don't have to tuck away cables with those. You can just connect the cables you need. My initial impressions of the Intermax Cyberbron are positive. It's priced right for a budget rig. It has a five-year warranty when a lot of the other ones on the market are just three years or less. And it is powering my uh, rig back here just fine. I want to thank the folks at Intermax for sending it over. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.